Welcome back everybody to another heart pounding episode of my epic coop build. Today I'm going to be putting on the, I'm going to be putting insects in my eyes, I'm going to be putting on the exterior door for the lady to get out into their run, the ladder to get out and the ramp to get out. This is going to be the last episode of my epic coop build, but it's not going to be the last episode that I do about this coop. I'm going to continue to add it to this coop to make it even more epic. You'll see all that. But for now, this will be the last part of the build that completes the coop and makes this a livable working coop. Stay tuned for all the details. Welcome back everybody to the art of doing. On this channel, I'm trying to help you live your best life by introducing you to new and different topics that hopefully become interests and even passions for you. In this build that I'm doing here, I've mixed a couple of new interests that have turned into passions in woodworking to build this coop and obviously keeping chickens to get beautiful fresh eggs and chickens are great. So let's get right into it. Let's start with the ladder for them to get out of the coop into the doorway. This is really just going to be a, a way for them to help themselves to hop up. They could probably hop right up to the doorway, but I'm going to give them a little help. And this is nothing fancy. A couple of two by fours, pre-painted obviously. This is going to be a foot wide. And I'm just going to kind of pre-put it together before we get out there and make it easier. And I'm not screwing this in all the way. I'm going to adjust the angles on these steps when I get out there. I'm going to save the top step for when we get outside. Okay, everybody. Boy, do I have a surprise for you. I already got all the new chicks. Hi there. Hi there, baby. Got a dozen new pullets. They're already in here. Getting coop trained for where to roost. <clears throat> and I'm going to have to work around them to get this ladder and door in place. So I've got my parts and my tools. Let's get in here and try not to scare these ladies too much. Now they are not going to like this too much at all. We've only been here a few days and they're just getting used to their surroundings and to me. They aren't appreciating this. So, the door to get out is going to be right here. I'm going to get a ladder for them right in this area. And this is why I left these not fully screwed in. I'm going to turn them as flat as can be for them. And because of the deep litter, this litter height is going to change. So I wanted to give them a way to hop up a little easier. And I'm wearing my white pants because I know I'm kneeling in chicken poop. Hopefully I don't get pooped on too much. I don't know if you can see, one of my speckled Sussex is right on the edge of the open door. I think if I go over there she'll fly out, so hopefully she pops herself back in. I'm going to put a little hook and eye bolt to hook this to the side um, so I can remove this ladder sometimes. Beautiful. So that hooks in, nice and sturdy. If I'm needing to clean out the deep litter, I can lift this out. It's not tacked down. Now let's get to working on the exterior door. Hopefully these chickens stay in here when I go to move out. How much chicken poop do I have on me? For the door is, this will be the outside trim and this will be the size opening for them. I believe I did a foot by 13 or 14 inch. I'm sorry, 10 by 12. Then I'm going to make the opening in the coop slightly larger than this so that we'll have a finished edge of the trim boards which I famously have already painted and then I'm going to have a door that is slightly bigger than that and then I'm going to put channels on it on the inside 
that um, I'll show you that when we get to it. Let's get this put together. This doesn't have to be put together too tightly um, because it's going to be screwed to the coupe itself. That should bite well enough. That is not going to bite at all. I have to do pocket holes for this. I was hoping this would go together a lot smoother than that. All right, pocket holes it is. Okay, got my trusty pocket hole jig out. You've seen me use this a bunch of times. Um, again, I did a review for it. I'll throw that in the description below. I think I'm only gonna do one hole per. And I think that should be good enough. This will be upside down, and like this. I wonder if I don't use this clamp, will it help to pull this piece of wood in easier? Let's try it out. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. So I've got a four foot section of plywood here. I don't know, what are we talking? 11 sixteenths, one foot wide. And I chopped up some one by three to give me one, th uh, um, to give me three quarters of an inch high. And I'm gonna space these out with three inches of space in between. It's probably overkill, but that's how I'm doing it. You know I like the overkill. I'm gonna start the first one three and a half inches up. That should give me equal spacing at the end. And I'm using the one and a quarter inch deck screws. I'm wondering if I should come in from the back. Ah, oh, that'll be a pain. I'm gonna be painting this anyway. I think that works. Yeah, that works. From what I understand, you shouldn't have your ramp be anything steeper than 45 degrees. It'll be too slidey for them. Anything over a foot of rise, 18 inch of rise to get into the door, you should give them a ramp. Every three to five inches for spacing on the cleat. I'm doing three to be extra safe because I like to build overkill. And uh, three quarters of an inch of a lip. I was gonna use two by four, but wood is so expensive these days, and this uh, one by three was pretty cheap, and it took care of my whole ramp. All right, it's time to install the exit door. Ladies aren't too happy that I'm in here. I'll start by drilling two pilot holes so I can do the measurements from outside of the coop, but I need to know where this stops in here, and I want this to be exact. It's important to have a poop scraper. And this piece, gonna sit right about there. Here's the frame that we already built. This is obviously the inside. That's close enough. Might be a 16th off. I'm gonna trim this back just a little bit. And then we'll start work on the inside. So this plywood that's the strip spacer is one piece of plywood. You know, there's four pieces here layered. This is one piece of plywood thicker than the door. So we have space to slide. Oh, come on, ladies. So I need to space this bottom piece a similar amount. Trusty poop scraper. Oh, 
Don't poop on me, please. Just got these two spacers. Just gonna mark where those screws are so I don't try to screw into them. We measure out the middle. trying to do here is catch the 2x4, catch the strip, and into the sheathing. Let's see how that worked when we get outside. We've got a little play here. Slides nice and smoothly. I got good overlap on all three sides and the top to prevent drafts from coming in. Let me go look at the outside, make sure everything's lined up well, and I'll further secure this, and then I'll show you what this hinge is for. Did you guys figure out what I'm doing yet? If you can see this, they are fighting over trying to eat this rope. I hope that's in camera. Probably figured out what I was doing with the rope. Love it. Finally caved in and brought the camera into the coop so you could see this door up close. And we figured out the, I showed you the, the string and the rope. But why hinge? Why not just a hook? I'll show you what I'm going to try to do. So, a couple things. The reason I didn't pre-paint, like I pre-paint everything, is I didn't want the door being sticky with the paint and binding up. So I figured I'd install it all and then paint the exterior part and leave the interior part unpainted. I might paint the exposed door, but I didn't want to get in the cracks. And then this, I'm hoping that when I pull this, the hinge comes up, pulls the door. When I let it go, this hinge will drop. And if there's an animal outside strong enough to start trying to pull this door up, it'll only get it so far before the hinge stops it. And I've got maybe an inch or so of space down here that I can lift. So anything strong enough to lift this door up isn't also going to be able to sneak in. A possum or a raccoon or something won't be able to get in. That's my hope. And I'm going to weigh this down a little bit so when I drop it, it tends to fall. And this is what I came up with. Inelegant, but completely, ooh. I was gonna say, completely workable. But well, that can happen. All right, I'm gonna make this a little bit longer. That should fix that issue. Just a little picture frame wire. For the bottom most part of the knot. If hanging down about here will do us. Just took some washers, some fairly large sized ones so they'd be a little hefty. And I just used a little 
dolphin clip. You telecom our electrician guys will know what this is. It's just a, a sleeve with some aluminum that you can crush on the inside. It crushes down and makes a permanent lock on that wire. I'm just going to tuck that back into the washers and let's see how that works. already come in handy. Why am I doing this with my nines this whole time? So these are linesman's pliers. People call them nines because they're nine inches long. Well, they'll call them nine inch pliers. So a lot of times I just call them nines. This is a one quarter inch twisted polyester rope. Nice and strong, rot resistant, moisture resistant. And you're seeing me with the, uh, with the lighter. You can melt the ends, kind of squish it together and make uh, a permanent knot out of it. And I've got a little D-ring here, a little D-clip. Way I know how high is open. I'm gonna go ahead and dead lead. All right, let's fix this ladder situation. Now before I finish off the last part, of the last episode of this build, two things. One, the build will be done, the structure will be done, but I've still got a few more episodes in store for you guys of some really cool things that I'm gonna do with this coop. Second thing, leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Which episode in this build was your favorite episode? Is there anything that you'd like me to talk more about how I built? And lastly, did you guys know what I was doing with that string before I did it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Let's get to fixing this ramp situation. So here's my solution for my uh, ramp issue. Nice little stump for the ramp to sit on. They can hop up this far and then climb up the rest. I'll give you a hint about one of my upcoming episodes with my coupe. This ramp solution was going to be temporary anyway, and I had built it future-proof. I was going to take it off, do a part of the next episode. I'll keep it a secret and use that piece of ramp. So I can still do that. I'll just modify the next episodes that are coming up. But let's put this on. I'm going to use the same hook and uh, loop. Beautiful. Well, that wraps up the last episode of this epic coupe build, hoping that it lived up to its name. These are just the episodes to make the structure of the coupe and the run complete. Stay tuned for all the cool tricks that I'm going to do to this coupe and run to make it even more epic, and I'll be releasing those soon. Thanks for staying with me throughout all of this. Uh, I'll leave a link um, in, in the description down below if you need to catch up or re-watch any of these episodes. And I appreciate you spending your time with me. Let's always remember to practice humility, practice kindness, and practice compassion. And thanks for being with me to help me practice the art of doing. There's some great videos over here that you might like. Click here to subscribe. And there's a great playlist down here. Thanks, everybody.